I'm going to read one of my favorite chapters of the BFG. When I was seven or eight, I would read this chapter over and over again. It's a chapter called Dreams. This may be split up into two videos. <clears throat> the big friendly giant was seated at the great table in his cave, and he was doing his homework. Sophie sat cross-legged on the tabletop nearby, watching him at work. The glass jar containing the one and only good dream he had caught that day stood between them. The BFG, with great care and patience, was printing something on a piece of paper with an enormous pencil. "'What are you writing?' Sophie asked him. "'Every dream is having a special label on the bottle,' the BFG said. "'How else could I be finding the one I am wanting in a hurry?' Can you really, truly tell what sort of a dream it is going to, it's going to be simply by listening to it? Sophie asked. I can, the BFG said, not looking up. But how? Is it by the way that it hums and buzzes? You is less or more right, the BFG said. Every dream in the world is making a different sort of buzzy hum music, and these grand swash bungling one, boggling ears of mine is able to read that music. By music, do you mean tunes? I is not meaning tunes. Then what do you mean? Human beings is having their own music, right or left? Right, Sophie said, lots of music. And sometimes human beings is very overcome when they is hearing wondrous music. They is getting shivers down their spindles, right or left? Right, Sophie said. So the music is saying something to them. It is sending a message. I do not think human beings is knowing what that, that message is, but they is loving it just the same. That's about right, Sophie said. But because of these jump-squiffling ears of mine, the BFG said, I is not only able to hear the music of dreams that dreams is making, but I is understanding it also. What do you mean, understanding it, Sophie said. I can read it, the BFG said. It talks to me. It is like a language. I find that just a little hard to believe, Sophie said. I'll bet you is also finding it hard to believe in quagwinkles, the BFG said, and how they is visiting us from the stars. Of course I don't believe that, Sophie said. The BFG regarded her gravely with those huge ears of his. I hope you will forgive me, he said, if I tell you that human beings is thinking that they is very clever, but they is not. They is nearly all of them not muchers and squeak pips. I beg your pardon, Sophie said. The matter with human beings, the BFG went on, is that they is absolutely refusing to believe in anything unless they is actually seeing it right in front of their own nozzles. Of course, Quagwinkles is existing. I is meeting them oftenly. I is even chatting to them. He turned away contemptuously from Sophie and resumed his writing. Sophie moved over to read what he had written so far. The letters were printed big and bold, but were not very well formed. Here is what it said. This dream is about how I is saving my teacher from drowning. I is diving into the river from a high bridge, and I is dragging my teacher to the bank, and then I is giving him the kiss of death. The kiss of what? Sophie asked. The BFG stopped writing and raised his head slowly. His eyes rested on Sophie's face. I was telling you once before, he said quietly that I is never having a chance to go to school. I is full of mistakes. They is not my fault. I do my best. You is a lovely little girl, but please remember that you is not exactly Miss Know Everything yourself. I'm sorry, Sophie said. I really am. It was very rude of me to keep correcting you. The BFG gazed at her a while longer, then he bent his head again and his slow, to his slow, laborious writing. Tell me honestly, Sophie said. If you blew this dream into my bedroom when I was asleep, would I really and truly start dreaming about how I saved my teacher from drowning by diving off the bridge? More, the BFG said, a lot more, but I cannot be squibbling the whole gro grope flunching th dream on a titchy bit of paper. Of course there is more. The BFG laid down his pencil and placed one massive ear close to the jar. For about thirty seconds he listened intently. Yes, he said, nodding his great head solemnly up and down. This dream is continuing very nice. It has a very dory hunky ending. How does it end? Sophie said. Please tell me. You would be dreaming, the BFG said, that the morning after you is saving the teacher from the river, you is arriving at school, and you is seeing all the five hundred pupils sitting 
in the assembly hall and all the teachers as well, and the head teacher is then standing up and saying, I is wanting the whole school to give three cheers for Sophie because she is so brave and is saving the life of our fine arithmetic teacher, Mr. Figgins, who is unfortunately pu who is unfortunately pushed off the bridge into the river by our gym teacher, Miss Amelia Upscotch. So three cheers for Sophie. And the whole school is then cheering like mad and shouting, Bravo, well done. And, f and forever after that, when you is getting your sums all guzzwinkled guzz and muggled up, Mr. Figgins is always giving you ten out of ten and writing, Good work, Sophie, in your exercise book. Then you is waking up. I like that dream, Sophie said. Of course you like it, the BFG said. It is a fizz wizard. He licked the back of the label and stuck it on the jar. I is usually writing a bit more than this on the labels, he said. But you is watching me and making me jumpsy. I'll go and sit somewhere else, Sophie said. Don't go, he said. Look in the jar carefully, and I think you will be seeing this dream. Sophie peered into the jar, and there, sure enough, she saw the faint translucent outline of something about the size of a hen's egg. There was just a touch of color to it, a pale sea green, soft and shimmering and very beautiful. There it lay, the small oblong sea green jellyfish thing, at the bottom of the jar, quite peaceful, but pulsing gently, the whole of it moving in and out ever so slightly, as though it were breathing. It's moving, Sophie cried. It's alive. Of course it's alive. What will you feed it on, Sophie asked. It is not needing any food, the BFG told her. That's cruel, Sophie said. Everything alive needs food of some sort, even trees and plants. The north wind is alive, the BFG said. It is moving. It touches you on the cheek and on the hands, but nobody is feeding it. Sophie was silent. This extraordinary giant was disturbing her ideas. He seemed to be leading her towards mysteries that were beyond her understanding. A dream is not needing a dream is not needing anything, the BFG went on. It is if it is a good one, it is waiting peaceably for every until it is forever until it is released and allowed to do its job. If it is a bad one, it is always fighting to get out. The BFG stood up and walked over to one of the many shelves and placed the latest jar among the thousands of others. Please, can I see some of the other dreams? Sophie asked him. The BFG hesitated. Nobody has ever seen them before, he said. But perhaps, after all, I is letting you have a little peep. He picked her up off the table and stood her on the palm of one of his huge hands. He carried her toward the shelves. Over here is some of the good dreams, he said. The fizz wizards. Would you hold me closer so I can read the labels, Sophie said. My labels is only telling bits of it, the BFG said. The dreams is usually much longer. The labels is just to remind me. Sophie started to read the labels. The first one seemed long enough to her. It went right round the jar, and as she read it, she kept turning the jar. This is what it said. Today I was sitting in class, and I discover that if I is staring very hard at my teacher in a special way, I is able to put her to sleep. So I keep staring at her, and in the end her head drops to her onto her desk, and she goes fast to sleep, and snorkels loudly, then in marches the head teacher, and he shouts, Wake up, Miss Plumridge! How dare you go to sleep in class? Go fetch your hat and coat and leave this school forever, you is sacked. But in a jiffy, I is putting the head teacher to sleep as well, and he just crump and he just crumples slowly to the floor like a lump of jelly, and there he lies all in a heap and starts snorkeling even louder than Miss Plumridge, and then I is hearing my mummy's voice saying, Wake up! Your breakfast is ready. What a funny dream, Sophie said. It's a ringbeller, the BFG said. It's a wopsy. Inside the jar, just below the edge of the label, Sophie could see the putting to sleep dream lying peacefully on the bottom, pulsing gently, sea green light just like the other one. But perhaps a trifle larger. Do you have to separate dreams for boys and girls, Sophie asked. Of course. The BFG said, if I was giving a girl's dream to a boy, even if it was a really wopsy girl's dream, the boy would be waking up thinking it was a rot, bungling, grink, sludging old dream, odd, what a, ah, what a rot, bungling, grink, sludging old dream that was. Boys would, Sophie said. Here, these here is all girls' dreams on the shelf, the BFG said. Can I read a boy's dream? You can, the BFG said, and he lifted her to the higher shelf. The label on the nearest boy's dream jar read as follows. 
I is making myself a marvelous pair of suction boots, and when I put them on, I is able to walk straight up the kitchen wall and across the ceiling. While I was walking upside down on the ceiling, when my big sister comes in and she is starting to yell at me, as she always does, yelling, What on earth is you doing up there, walking on the ceiling? And I looks down at her, and I smiles, and I says, I told you you was driving me up the wall, and now you has done it. I find that rather silly, Sophie said. Boys wouldn't, the BFG said, grinning. It's another ring beller. Perhaps you have seen enough now. And I'm going to pause the video here and post it, and then I will do the second half of the chapter.